Hi, and welcome to Genre Chat. I'm Sherry Lynn Bisbano. This episode is fiction. Our guest today is Dennis Bailey. Welcome, Dennis. Hey, tell us a little bit about your background in writing and your career. Well, my background and career is uh, I was a police officer for 28 and a half years, and I, I, I didn't take up writing until uh, after that career was over uh, when I was uh, 54. And um, I just, uh, based on uh, fiction that I'd read before, uh, particularly Jerry Jenkins in his Left Behind series, that he was the one that got me into uh, a love of, of Christian fiction. And I just, uh, from there, I just felt like uh, God laid this story on my heart um, after I read some of, some of his books that I just felt like I had to tell. and. So in May of 2009, I sat down and wrote my first scene for, for, for a novel. And what's the name of that novel? It's, it's called Army of God, and it tells the story of how the animals of Noah's Ark rose up to defend it against an invading army. Oh, wow. That's a, oh, wow. That, that sounds pretty interesting. So now, is this your only novel? Have you written anything else? Have you written articles? No, this is my, this is, well, well, well I do a blog and, and I've, um, I've written a couple of articles, but this is my first um, manuscript, my first novel. Uh, it's my debut novel and it's um, getting ready, ready to be released in, in, in mid-October. Congratulations. Thank you. That's wonderful. That's really good. Wonderful. Now, what is your blog about? And, you know, do you discuss certain things? Are you, is it a biblical blog? Is it a personal blog? Well, it's more a biblical blog. It's, it's my, um, it's my author website. And I just have a, a blog on it that I periodically put things, a lot of stuff. Uh, most of it has a lot to do with, um, biblical history and, um, many a uh, few articles about about noah and the ark and, and different aspects uh, of, of that uh as well as other biblical history and then um a lot of the blog, blogs are just devotionals uh taken from, that i take from scripture have you visited the ark have you visited the done the ark experience no that is uh that's one of the things uh my wife and i we actually are planning to go this year uh sometime this fall and of course, we were hoping that, that it would be in conjunction uh, with the release of my book, uh, since you know it, it's it's a perfect tie-in to uh, to the uh, Ark Encounter, uh, having a novel out about about Noah's Ark. So um, we were we were hoping. That, I was even hoping that my uh, agent and publisher could get a book signing uh, done there, if possible. Maybe one day he will. That would be great. My sister went to the Ark Experience and took her son and her son's best friend, and they they liked it better than Disney. <laughs> well, that's, that's great. We we really look forward to it again after after having written for over five years about about Noah's Ark. Um, I definitely look forward uh, to going to visit the uh, the Ark Encounter. <laughs> Wonderful. So, as you wrote this fiction book. And some of it, I'm sure you took some stuff from the Bible. Can you tell us how you wove fiction principles and also the nonfiction biblical accounts as you, as you wrote this book? Well, one of the things I, my, my very first goal in writing this book was to, was to main, maintain absolute fidelity to the scripture. So I wasn't going to go and stray too far away from, uh, from what scripture had. But then on the other hand, the Bible, uh, uh, the story of Noah is only uh, four s small chapters in, in the Bible. And you, uh, so my goal was to flesh out, uh, especially the eight characters, the, the eight, uh, Noah and his family, mm -hmm. uh, the eight characters that I know the world has always wondered about because the Bible doesn't tell us a whole lot about Noah or his family. Mm -hmm. You don't even know the names of, of any of the women in Noah's family. Mm -mm. So I wanted to bring those characters to life in, in, in a story. But again, my goal was to maintain um, faithfulness uh, to the scriptures. So the, the idea about the, uh, the animals uh, being an intricate part, uh, I guess that's just what the spirit laid on me. That was, that was the heart and soul of what I, what I wanted to do. I thought, 
you know, there's been some Hollywood productions that have been on the books out about it, but uh, no one had ever used the, um, the idea of using the animals as, as anything more than just the cargo that was on the ark. So I wanted them to play a, a more prominent role in my novel. Where did you look up the history about that time, um, you know, to describe maybe conversations between the people or what they might have been wearing or what they were doing at that time? Did you rely strictly on the Bible for that? Mostly on the Bible, but I did uh, uh, in research other um, Hebrew texts, uh, particularly the writings of Josephus. Oh, uh, yes. Who... Um, who wrote the Antiquities of the Jews, and he gives uh, there's a he has a whole um, chapter devoted to uh, Noah's Ark, and it gives you just some extra insights and extra little tidbits that, that are not included in the Bible that I was able to weave into my story. Lots of good stuff came from out of out of his writings. I've read some of Josephus' stuff. It's it's very intriguing and very informative. Right. Well, one now, of the things. No, you go. I'm sorry, I just, I just wanted to add this, that um, one of the things that people don't realize is an interesting aspect of, of my story is that it actually had, has a basis in Jewish folklore and history. Um, several ancient Hebrew texts uh, describe a confrontation between a group of people of the, of the time that tried to break into the ark and how they were destroyed by the animals that surrounded it. So, this actually has its, its basis in, 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 in Jewish tradition. I've never heard that story before. Um, and for people who don't know who Josephus is, can you just briefly explain who this man is? Uh, <laughs> I don't know all that much about him other than, than he, that he lived during the, after the time of Jesus and he was a, um, he, he was a, a, a Hebrew historian and um, I can't remember when his, when his writings are dated from. I think it was, I'm just guessing, so please forgive me. I think 70 years after the time of Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not positive about that. But uh, his writings are considered uh, the most uh, reliable uh, of any other Jewish writings uh, other than the Bible himself. Well, I, itself. I know a lot of... Uh, Pastors quote him, and I believe people who want to go to non-Christian texts use Josephus to prove that Christ actually really did live and what actually was going on back then during those biblical times. Well, and again, for me, it was just another um, uh, supportive foundation for my story because, again, he had a whole chapter written about Noah and the ark, and again, I was able to glean um, just a few more details that, that helped turn my story in, 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 in one direction or the other. And it was, it was just really helpful to have that uh, above and beyond the scripture. Because, again, the scriptures don't, don't describe anything. The only thing we know about, uh, about Noah is that he was a righteous man mm -hmm. and, and that he walked with God. Uh, but, we, again, we don't know anything about his family. Uh, we don't know what uh, trials and, and, and tribulations he went through. Um, with all those that were condemned mm. uh, while he was building the ark, uh, with what trials and tribulations he may have even gone through with his with his own family members. Um, mm. I think just imagine yourself if your father came home one day and said, you know, we're building this huge, huge ark. The world's going to end in a in, in hundred years and we're going to all go out and build this huge, huge ark. I, I think even uh, his own family members would have had some, would have been skeptical. Yeah, I would think so because nobody had ever seen a boat. They no, never, exactly. they, they, I don't think they lived in a little bubble, didn't they? It didn't even rain. It was like just like a little terrarium that the earth was like, correct? Well, that's a that's another source of contention because I actually wrote a, a, an article, Sherry Lynn, um, uh, arguing against that that there was rain on the earth before the flood. Oh. Uh, that, in fact, if you're in, if anybody's interested, it's on my it, it, it's on my website, uh, DennisBaileyAuthor.com, and it's called "The Case for Rain Before the Flood." It's oh, I'm going to go read that. I'm going to go read that. It's it's a two part um, uh, blog post, and it, it makes the case for for rain before the flood. But again, it's just my interpretation of scripture, and uh, most of it's based on that. So. Well, I think I'll go read it. So during your time of writing this book. 
what were the greatest lessons that you've learned, like either writing tips or research tips? All right, a couple of things I can say. The first thing, I, um, one of the things, again, I learned from Jerry Jenkins and from other authors that mm -hmm. there are two kind of authors out there, those that outline and those that don't. And I could just say, if, if, if I were to give advice, and again, this is coming from a first-time author, is I had to outline because I didn't, uh, I, I agree with Jerry Jenkins' um, uh, thought about free writing. When you sit down, you just let, the, you know, you let your mind just wander and you, and you kind of discover things as you write. But for a first-time writer, and, I, and again, as we talked about before, coming from a, um, a police background, I'm somewhat structured, it was easier for me to do an outline. And what I and, and the tip that I found most useful, and this can be for, for your new writers who have, who have never uh, written a book before, is I actually took Jerry Jenkins' book Left Behind, and I also took it was published in 1999, and I took another book from Diane Mills called uh, The Chase, which was published in 2012. And there's that 13 year gap between the two. And what I did was I used a spreadsheet, and I mapped out every single scene of those two books just to, to give me this uh, background and structure of how to write it. I just want, if I can, if, if people can see this, I just want to hold up a copy of this. Um, Please do. Can, can you see that? Yes, wow, that is a lot of work. That's, that's very just, impressive, Dennis. That's just, wow. the first, that's just the first three chapters of Jerry Jenkins Left Behind. Have you and, told Jerry or Diane that you've done this? No. But I, I'm, I'm sure I'll get He'd love to hear there. that. He would but, love to hear that. But what it did is it, it, it gives the chapter scene, page number, number of pages, point of view, and then a little blurb about what each scene is about. And again, if you're a first time writer, I just felt that, that really, really helped me. One of the things I learned, for instance, um, during the writing is the difference between just those 13 years, the difference between when, when uh, Mr. Jenkins published his book in 1999 and Diane Mills in 2012, how chapter lengths had changed. All of Mr. Jenkins' um, um, chapters in his book are average around 20 pages, and sometimes more. But now, 13 years later, and this is still true today, chapter lengths have, have, have shrunk greatly. I mean, they're usually less than 10 pages. And yes, sometimes yes. only three or four pages. Yes. That's, that's something new, relatively new. Um, compared to the time of when Jerry Jenkins first started his Left Behind series. So that's, that was an in, interesting thing that I learned there. And what helped me greatly was doing that, taking the time to do that, do that outline. And then, of course, I just didn't, the outline for Army of God is, is like 10 times this. Wow. So, but it did. Again, it helped me following you know, their structure to learn how to do my own structure. One of the other things, here's another tip I want to give, and this is, this isn't about the actual writing process itself, it's about posture. <laughs> as, a, as almost 30 years in the police department, I developed a bad back. And I'm sure a lot of people can, um, can relate to that. But the point is, I remember Jerry Jenkins telling me the first thing you need to be a good writer is to get a, a good, comfortable chair. Well, that is true to a degree, but you can only spend so many times in a chair. So right now I'm standing, I, I, I'm sitting here being interviewed by you at my standing desk. And it's adjustable, so I can go up and down. So I can. So what I what I did during my writing process, because you know I would have, I, I treated it like a job, and I wrote for eight eight hours a day or more uh, when I was writing. So for that long a time, being you know just sitting in one position would just kill my back. Standing in, in that position for for eight hours would kill my back. So I had, with an adjustable desk or something similar. You can set up, you can just, you can take breaks. You can stand up and write for a little while and you can sit down. It just proved to be a great, great help for those long sessions. That's, I do that personally. I get up, I have a good chair. We spent money on good chairs, but I get up and I walk around like every half an hour um, or every hour. And sometimes if I'm really tired, I get up and do jumping jacks. <laughs> and and that, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, it, it's, you know, it's hard to write when, when you're in pain. It's hard to concentrate. Yes. So you want to make yourself as comfortable as possible. And I just know 
maybe for younger writers, they can they can do a 12 hour session in a chair. But I guarantee you when they reach 50, they won't be able to no, do it. No, 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 they won't. Now, did you read any books on writing? Did you go to any websites? What did you do to prepare or what do you do to continue to keep your writing tools sharp? I, I wrote, I read dozens and dozens and dozens of books on writing. Again, this was, this was a brand new thing for me. Uh, again, I'd, I'd spent most of my, uh, my, my career in law enforcement. After I left the police department, I went um, and worked for the, for the Department of Defense for nine more years before I you know, finally was able to, to retire completely. Because I, I spent the first uh, three and a half years writing Army of God part-time while I was working at DOD. And it wasn't until 2014 that I, that I fully retired and it still took me another 16 months to complete Army of God. So I read many, many, many books on writing. Again, this was like getting a new education. I was starting from scratch in my 50s, and uh, I had to take the equivalent of a, of, of a college course, not a college course, uh, uh, a, a master's degree in writing to, to learn enough to be able to, um, to write a book. What books did you find the most helpful? Oh gosh, um, what's his name? Uh, Stein on writing. Yes. Um, uh, Jerry Jenkins' own book. Um, uh, gosh, the titles are going to are, are going to fly out of here right now, Sherry Lynn. That's uh, he, heard, right. uh, he, he he had a book on um, uh, on writing. Uh, writing for the soul. Writing for the soul. Writing yeah. for the soul. Uh, I've actually got a, uh, got a bunch of them over here in my class. Let me, let me just kind of walk away for a second. Yeah, no worries. When you come back, I want you to tell us um, if, your next, if your next book might be something to do with police or military, since you have all that background. That kind of stuff is so... Um, it, people love that stuff. I know I do. I love suspense. In fact, I'm writing one right now, suspense, mystery. I love uh, military stuff, and, and I, love, I love police stuff. I love the process of the investigation. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's part of what um, writing a book is, is about, too, and, I, and I, uh, I give credit to my police background for helping me to, to, to delve down and analyze and, and investigate you're investigating your own novel and in, in mm -hmm. how to craft a story. So it's it's like finding you know finding out who the, who the killer is. Um, you need to find out how your plot works and how your characters are gonna, are going to come out so that your story ends the way you want it to. So it's it's a lot like that. A lot of an analysis and uh, uh, deductive reasoning uh, that goes yep. on, just like like if if, if 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 you were doing like police work. So. What was the other thing you wanted me uh, to say when, when I came back and you asked me about? Oh, if you were going to write a book about it all. Oh, <laughs> I, I, voice of, this is very, this is very, uh, a little bit humorous. I, it's so funny when I, when I first started taking some courses and I actually went to Jerry Jenkins' uh, uh, boot camp, writing boot camp, and then I actually attend, I graduated from his um, craftsman writing course. Uh, I was asked because they knew I was a police officer. Everybody assumes you're going to write crime stories. Sherry Lynn, believe it or not, I don't have any desire to write crime stories. <laughs> you lift it, you don't want to write about it. <laughs> well, it was, the same, it was the same way, it was the same way I was when, when I went to DOD and I had all the police background, they wanted to put me in a security position. I didn't want anything. I, 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 I'd spent, you know, 28 and a half years doing police work. I didn't want to do police work anymore. So I actually had some accounting background and, and they ended up making me a, a business manager. This is the same way here. Lots of people write crime stories, and I'm sure I, I could write one. Uh, just right now, I don't have the, um, I just don't have the drive to do it. I'm really focused on, I have, I have four or five books, uh, all Christian fiction, that I've really been bitten by the Christian fiction bug, bug so I'm hoping to, to stay in that genre. Um, I hope to write a book, I, I hope to write a book about Job, who's my uh, absolute favorite mm -hmm. person in the, in, the, in the Old Testament. Uh, and, and, and a couple of other projects that I've got on the work, uh, on the works. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to, uh, to be writing Christian fiction. It's, uh, it's, I don't have to have any, uh, 
uh, regrets or, or, right. or, or bouts of conscious when I'm writing it. Uh, I was afraid if I got, because I know if I, if I wrote, if I, wrote it, I, wonder, I don't know how it would be. You might be right. Maybe I could write a crime drama, but it would be hard um, to keep it clean, knowing how police work and, and how crime scenes and all those things are. Uh, they can get me pretty gory. Do you know who does a really good? Do you know who does a really good job at that? Is Stephen James? Oh yes, he does. He does do an excellent job of that. He he but gets I, right up to the line, but he doesn't push you over the edge. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But I even know for some Christians, it's, even Stephen James is is too intense for them. So it's 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 all a matter of you know of what your taste is. But right, and what God puts on your heart to write. Now, do you have those books? What's that? The writing books that you went to the closet for? Oh, I didn't pull them out. <laughs> yeah, Stephen James, I think, does a really good job. I really enjoy his writing. I, I'm, I like that kind of stuff. I, I like realism, but not too gory and not too... Um, in your face he he does all the scenes with respect but um not not too too much uh gore okay here's here's just just a few um on becoming a writer by john gardner uh john gardner gardner the art of fiction he's one of the one of the best teachers you want to show the cover oh i'm sorry sure i'm sorry that's all right the art of fiction. Oh, well, great. Um, this is a, this is another. These, these are more uh, technical books, but they're but 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 they're needed. This one's called uh, "Self Editing for Fiction Writers" by Renee. I have that one. I have that one. Yes, yes, a, a must read. Um, this one's called "The Writer's Little Little Helper." Wow. Looks like you've been using it. <laughs> yes, I have. They're, they're all they're all marked um, and they're all highlighted throughout. Uh, this is called the Scene Book, a, a primer for for the fiction writer. Oh, I love it! <laughs> it looks like a composition notebook. I love and it. Then, and then perhaps one of, one of the most important of all, and this is one I'm sure you're familiar with, um, and I recommend that everyone read this at least once a year. It's called The Elements of Style by, by Strunk and White. And yes, I have really that one too. That this is a must read for anyone who wants to become a writer because you really don't know how, how little grammar you truly know until, um, until you read this book. And uh, you know, I think most of those books are on Jerry Jenkins' uh, list of all the books that you should be reading as a writer. I think he has it at his website if people want to go. Yeah, I have. In fact, you're exactly right. And it's probably the reason that his list and my list coincide. I, I, I'm sure I um, took most of these from his list. But I do have um, at least two dozen more in there that, like I said, this, this education was, was, was what it took to get a master's degree uh, in, in the time I spent, you know, just preparing uh, for the writing. Because anybody thinks they can just sit down and write a, write a book. If they do, then they they truly are touched by God without doing any any kind of prep in the background. And and I had written for many many years as a police officer. I was a detective. I wrote investigative, long, detailed investigative reports. So I, I had a pretty good writing background. But writing factual information um, based on your own uh, experiences and even nonfiction is nothing like writing fiction. Fiction is an entirely different world upon itself and I think it's John Gardner that says you're trying to get people to uh, when they read the book to fall into this dream world so they don't even realize they're reading it's like you're dreaming but you're seeing everything happening happening in your mind and, there, and there's to be able to to reach people in that way takes a certain uh, degree of skill it does we have only about five minutes left so um, it would buy so fast I want to ask you: um, Do you have another? Do you have another parting tip or another parting words of wisdom? And sure. I also well, want you to um, give us your your contact information in case somebody wants to get a hold of you, and also your your um, website. Absolutely. The la last tip I have, and this is uh, this is a tip I learned 
uh, the hard way myself is to check your facts and check your research. I, I wrote a book called Army of God that I thought I knew everything about the, uh, about the story of Noah and Noah's Ark. And I found out that when I got into writing the book, uh, Noah has three sons, Japheth, Shem, and Ham. And what I did is when I wrote the book, I, I went under the assumption for some reason that, that Shem was the youngest of his three sons, and he's not. Ham is the youngest of his three sons. I didn't find that out till I, uh, the mistake until I almost had the book completed. So oh, wow. I had to go back and rewrite large sections because I'd already drawn the personalities of the characters. So it wasn't just a matter of switch. I couldn't just switch names because the character's personality has already been written. So right. it, it took me a couple of weeks of editing huge chunks of the novel to get that right. And the moral of the story is just when you do your research, just make sure you, you check your facts first before you put pen to paper. And that's a lesson I would you know, love to share with, with anyone who's going out there to write because I made the biggest mistake in the world. And fortunately, I was lucky, to, lucky enough to be able to catch it. Before it was published, yeah. Well, yes, before it was published. Uh, as far as contacting, uh, reaching me, uh, uh, again, my best place to reach me is, is at my website, which is uh, DennisBaileyAuthor.com. Uh, and, and, and I have my, my email address there is Dennis at DennisBaileyAuthor.com. Or um, I'm on Facebook as, as Dennis Bailey, but there's a bunch of Dennis Baileys. But I'm also on Twitter at uh, D Bailey Author. Wonderful. I wanted to know, um, I think a few people might want to pick your brain about being a police officer and a detective and, any, and all that. Would you consider doing, um, if, if somebody were to contact you, would you consider maybe helping them uh, with details in their book or, you know, brainstorming of what it's like to be a police officer if they're writing about a police officer? Oh, absolutely. In, in fact, at one of these, um, are you familiar with Brandall and Collins? Yes, yes. At, at the um, Jerry Jenkins boot camp that I attended in, in, in May of 2011, when she found out I was a police officer, she was like all excited because she writes a lot of um, dramas that have, um, you know, police things in them. And uh, she, she asked the same thing because she used me, she goes, especially when she found out I was, I was a detective, I, I, I actually investigated uh, rape cases for for five, five years, so she uh, she was you know enthralled by that, and certainly anyone that that, that wants any inf information that I can help them with to to write a uh, to write an investigative novel, um, please feel free to contact me. I, I'll be more than happy to to help anyone uh, with with my background in that. Well, thank you, Dennis. Thank you for joining us for Genre Chat. And I highly encourage you to go check out DennisBaileyAuthor.com. Until next time, I'm Sherry Lynn Bisbano for Genre Chat.